it's amazing how things change, I guess, yeah. as well, isn't yeah. it, really, along but the I way? Was writing, I was writing plays and putting them on in the, in the grammar school. Yeah. And they used to, and I was always, when it got to the, the, the final exams, they'd say, Big up, Big up, you must do some work. It's time you do some work. You're n never attending the classes. And I, I, you, you, you must get to work. I said, Get to work? <laughs> I'm writing the plays, I paint the scenery, I'm playing the lead. And it, <laughs> it is work, basically. Yes, it was work, yes. Yeah. But I loved it. And then, and then I went into the army and did the same thing, what yeah. I did in the army. You had to go in for, for uh, two years, you know. Yeah, very interesting, very who has been your uh, biggest influence along the way, as, not only as a writer, but um, as a performer as well? Good heavens, I know. Uh, there's, all sorts of different, a lot, lots of different people. Yeah. Uh, the great, the great, my great friend was Jack Good, who who created yes. Six Five Special, you know. Yeah. And uh, I knew him because, strangely enough, at the grammar school there was a chap called, um, I can't, I can't remember his name now, <laughs> but he was a fame. He became a famous conductor, and we used to sing together and uh, classical music, yeah. and. Um, he went to Oxford and was with Je um, in the same college as Jack Good. Yeah. And through that, I, I met Jack Good and then start started writing uh, scripts. Yes. Because uh, they, they needed scripts for the radio. There yeah. wasn't a television then. The radio was it. Yeah. And uh, so I used to I used to write bits for them, and uh, and when it came to it, suddenly we had a. I could tell you lots about. My life in poverty in the East End, where uh, because you didn't know where to start. I didn't go to a drama school or anything like that. Uh, but um, suddenly, you know, television had started in Shepherd's Bush, the yeah. BBC, wow. small screen. Very few people had a television set. It was only one channel, black and white. My nan always used to say to me, it was only the wealthy, the really um, well-off oh, yes. that had the televisions. Yes, yes it was. I don't think it cost a great deal, but it did cost a bit. Yeah. And people said, they thought, you know, oh, no, no, it's so small. It's only the size of a plate. <laughs> we can go to the cinema, big, big, and it'll be in colour. Yeah. It's, uh, so it was, the, it was the coronation, you know. Yeah. The coronation of the Queen. That's, uh, that's uh, uh, what started it. People said, really? you, you mean we'll be able to see it? Of course. It'll be like a film in your, in your front room. And so from only being about 200,000 sets, there were suddenly a, a million people. A million people had it. Now, of course, everybody has it. <laughs> <laughs> they have one in each room, including th the bath. I think <laughs> in, in every household nowadays, you know, you're right there, even in the bathroom in some people's <laughs> homes. I, I wouldn't be surprised at all. In the 1960s, I believe it was around 1967 to 68, Herman's Hermit um, had a huge had huge success after they recorded one of your songs yes. uh, called Mrs. Brown. You've you've you have a lovely daughter. I got there in the end. Mm -hmm. um, tell me the story behind this huge success. How did it all start? Well, I tell you how it started. I I was uh, asked. I I started to act on television. Yeah, and uh, they made. They made a television play about the war, the troubles in Cyprus. Yeah, there was big troubles in Cyprus. The Greeks and and, uh, uh, and the other lot mm -hmm. <laughs> all fighting against each other. Yeah. And uh, Cyprus actually belonged to this to the empire, the British Empire. Mm -hmm. And there was the, the play was about these soldiers who were who were couldn't. Were, they were told you can't. You you're there to make keep the peace. And there's no flirting with local girls. That's forbidden. Can't do that. And so all they had to entertain them was was people like you, yeah, d d presenting music. And they had uh, the sm these small wireless sets that you could carry around. Though there were new <laughs> things then, yeah. and they would listen to music. And uh, the, the, there were three soldiers. There was Tom Courtney, who was mm -hmm. the lead, and Johnny Thor, who went on to do Morse and all that, and yeah. myself. And uh, the, the the director said to me, uh, "We need we need to hear these songs that the boys are singing and how they're singing about girlfriends and they're not allowed to flirt, you know, with the local ladies." So, so he said, uh, "We want six songs." I said, six songs." Uh, yes. And so he said, I said, "When?" He said, "Next Thursday." By next Thursday, and. Uh, 
I thought, well, this is this is this is it. I've got you. You have to faith. You have to do it. Yeah. And I was I was there by then acting as well at the um, at the at the theatre, the Old Vic. And I used to, I just used to write it up, right? Yeah. I remember I used to take a play, <clears throat> and see a good line because all, all my songs were about were stories, and I read this thing. It wasn't Mrs. Brown; it was Mrs. So and So. Mrs. So and So, you have a lovely daughter. Yeah. And that was in the line. And as I drove to work, I kept saying, you know, and I thought Brown, Brown, I, I like that. Uh, and as I drove, I sang uh, Mrs. Brown, you're gonna love. No, that's no good. Be this brown or daddy to play that. I tried, <laughs> tried different rhythms, and suddenly I just found myself singing, Mrs. Brown, you got a lovely doll, lovely doll. And, and uh, that's good, that's good. And, uh, and uh, so the, the play was filmed and put out, and everybody yeah. wrote up saying, we loved, we loved the show. Can you get the songs? And so uh, Decker made. Uh, That's right. To, uh, an album with two s songs, with yeah. two on one side and two on the other side. On a forty-five, That's this right. was. That's yeah. right. And and Tom Courtney sang his songs, and um, and I did a few bits to it, and that was the end of that. Until about four months later, somebody rang me up and said, "Your song." I said, "You've got a song in the American Hit Parade." Mm. And I said, no, because I, I never followed these things up. I just thought it was a lot of fun to do it. Yeah. And uh, then he said, well, you know, listen out and you'll hear it. I said, what song? And he said, uh, Mrs. Brown, you've got a lovely daughter. I said, that's, that's me and old Tom Courtney. That, that, <laughs> that, <laughs> that, 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 can't, that can't be true. Uh, and then the next week he said, uh, you've knocked Elvis off the, off the top. I know, I was just about to actually uh, ask you about that. That is incredible. I, when I was doing my research, I thought, knocked the king of rock and roll off of the top. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, it went to number one, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, knocked um, yeah. the king of rock and roll off of the top But that was when, the as you spot. say, the, the, the other band, because they hurt, they hurt Mickey Most, yeah. who, who looked after, what was the band... Uh, Ooh, right. Hey, um, you, you mentioned them. I, I did, Herman's Hermit. Herman's Hermit. Yes, of course, of course, of course. <laughs> and he, he was making the album, <laughs> album with them. They were huge. Were they from America. Manchester? Yeah, they were yeah. some. And, and they were huge in America suddenly, and, and before the Beatles this was, and they yeah. were very popular. And he said, right, we, need, we really need eight songs on the album. We've only got seven. And then he, he, he heard this song, and he said, we'll do that. And so he did, and I didn't knew nothing about it, but it's gone on and uh, forever, and uh, and then everybody wanted you to write songs then, so I wrote a few more. This this particular song sold fourteen million copies worldwide Is across it, yes. the world, and you were telling me on the um, phone the other day that it's it, apparently it's on about a million people's mobile phones across yes, the world that's as well. Right. Yes, instead of funny, if they, somebody calls them up. There's a mouse under there. Yeah, there could well be. There's, There's a, a mouse, mouse in the <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is just incredible. Something yes. to be extremely proud of, really. And well, it was just luck, really. I mean, it yeah. did have... And, and that's what... That's, it's, it's, uh, it was just chance. If you're in the right place at the, the right, right time, time, exactly, things will happen for you, it, and you mustn't try too hard. They'll all come if you if you just. I think that's the faith. key to a lot of things, really. Yeah. Trying too hard can sometimes um, go really, really wrong, can't it? Sometimes, yes. you yeah. know. But I have to ask you this: um, it's just an "is it true" question. Is it true that you and your friend Jack Good um, co-discovered co Cliff Richard? Yes, yes, it's true. Yes, there were well, all of them. You see, we, there was Marty, Marty Wilde, and uh, uh, Tommy Steele was yeah. the first one. I thought he was going to do when he started. He was going to do sort of Greek theatre and uh, um, on the television. He wanted me to help with that. Yeah, and uh, uh, he rang me up, but I didn't hear from him for a while. Then he rang me up and said, "I know what we're going to do." And I go, "Oh, Greek theatre, that's good." And uh, he said, "Go around to Frinsbury Park Empire." seven o'clock tonight and uh, I'll show you what it is so I thought really I went to Frinsbury Park Empire and there in big lights was this new name Tommy Steele in person and I thought Tommy Steele he's not in Greek theatre does he <laughs> and in we went <laughs>